Hey Doc, uh, thank you for circling me in on this case. Um, this is one of those that might be trickier than it seems. Uh, with that said, I think we can get to the finish line. So what you had said is the patient wanted to upgrade their anterior aesthetics. Not surprising here as it seems like there is quite a bit of um, uh, restorative nature to the posterior teeth. Always interesting to see when we see entrapment in the anterior posterior teeth suffer. Uh, as we talked about last night in the occlusion uh, module, mutually protected occlusion is sometimes disrupted when you have something like this. Essentially, the mandible doesn't organically glide and disclude the back teeth. And because of that, the muscles are not happy and they take out the stress in the back teeth. So, interesting observation evidenced by continued recession on this lower molar. But I agree with what you said. Your diagnosis was uh, good. What's interesting is it's not compensatory eruption of the upper teeth. And here's why. Class two bites. So if we look over here, we look at the molar relationship. This patient is probably two to three millimeters class two. Um, they're more likely to have eruption of the lower anterior teeth like you had identified. So it is correct that you have compensatory eruption, but I think it's an important conversation to have. It's not compensatory eruption of the upper teeth, evidenced by the fact if you draw a line between the canines, the cervical margins of eight and nine are relatively close. Maybe this guy's a little dropped down. When we see compensatory eruption, it's typically when the patient has more, um, less of a class two situation, but there's quite a bit of wear here. So it's an interesting observation. The diagnosis is compensatory eruption of the lower arch. I'm not sure if you had um, clarified that. We're getting very deep, but I think as you and I get more advanced together, I think these are important conversations to have. So, um, does the patient currently have overjet to restore them where they are? And there, there is some overjet here. Uh, overjet being space between the upper and lower teeth. These are retroclined. So, uh, let me see if I can say this. The presence of overjet with retroclined teeth may not be as good as proclined teeth with no overjet, if that makes any sense. So I'd, I'd rather have a more harmonious um, angle of these anterior teeth. What you can do, and I've done this with patients with financial limitations, is literally just add composite to the facials and reduce the linguals. So do a lingual enamelplasty uh, facial composites. You, in essence, um, worsen the exposure of the dentin back here but I've actually prepped that back and then added composite. Um, it's a lot of work, uh, really, for an in inferior material, but I think kind of sharing this line of reasoning might be a bit beneficial. Um, in a nutshell, I think these teeth should be crowned after ortho, just like you had presented, uh, but that would be one option. So in a nutshell, <clears throat> when we have the conversation about cases like this with Invisalign, we have to ask the question, where does Invisalign shine? It shines with unraveling crowded teeth, moving mesial, distal, and buccal lingual, not incisal gingivally. Yes, it can happen, but intruding these teeth with Invisalign alone is uh, not going to happen for two reasons. Um, in an 18 year old pa growing patient, could you maybe level the curve of speed with Invisalign with proper attachments in the posterior and a two year treatment execution? Maybe. Um, but this is an older patient that you're not going to get leveling of this curve of SPI because of the fact that it's rather severe and the amount of solid bone that you have around these teeth is rather significant. So whenever you see worn teeth, nine times out of 10, the bone around them is more dense. I think we realize that when we go to extract teeth, especially root canal treated teeth um, that have wear, um, it's a whole different animal very, very dense cortical bones surrounding the teeth. Um, you, you won't be able to intrude these at all uh, with Invisalign. Luke could put some brackets on and definitely get you to the finish line in about a year, year and a half. Um, but it's difficult, you know, especially when you're asking to bond onto porcelain here. Um, so I think leveling the curve of speed with Invisalign 
is not going to happen, but I do like what you said, increasing the overjet with Invisalign because Invisalign shines with buccolingual motions. In this case, that'd be called crown, root, uh, crown tipping. Uh, definitely can do that. Uh, Dr. Hicks and I did a case together, somewhat similar, where the patient actually had compensatory eruption. We did <clears throat> um, buccalization of the crown, so we provided 15 degrees of um, buccal crown tipping. We did some crown lengthening, uh, and with the orthodontics in the surgery, we were able to give him a nice foundation for Hicks to come in and do some, sur uh, some veneers. <clears throat> so, I like Invisalign here for this purpose, not leveling of the lower. Can you try to do some? Sure. You might as well use the trays and try to get you know, some better alignment here, but don't expect full resolution. Uh, as far as attachments go, when you intrude back teeth, there's a equal and opposite reactive force, Newton's third law of um, motion. Um, when you intrude, the tray wants to lift up back here, so you have to put rather large attachments on these teeth. How do you bond attachments to porcelain, hydrofluoric acid, etch, silane, so on and so forth, but they do pop off. Uh, with that said, <clears throat> you might be able to intrude these teeth maybe a quarter millimeter and extrude the posterior teeth to give you some leveling. But again, definitely not something you're, you're going to be happy with in the end, with Invisalign alone, in a patient who grinds. Uh, you had mentioned maybe just crowning the teeth as, as is. Yeah. Not ideal, but could be done because of the overjet. But it's important to note that this patient has a restricted envelope of function. When you see wear like this, your crowns cannot live right there. There's a tool in the spear world called a custom incisal guide table where you mount the case on an articulator and <clears throat> you, in essence, capture the angle of this wear so that the future prosthetic does not in hit, um, invade that zone. What do I mean? So if we turn the mandible on, the mandible wants to, to have um, some space to function. When we see wear on incisal edges of upper anterior teeth, we have to say, well, the mandible didn't like the position of those teeth. Well, how do we create the case if we're not going to create it with orthodontically? <laughs> How do we know that our future restorative material is not going to inhibit that zone? Custom incisal guide table. Um, it's an old technique in the world of prosthodontics, but I think this might be a case to do if you decided to do crowns, uh, which I think is the right answer. If you just veneer the teeth and, and then enamelplasty here, making sure that your zone of um, veneer attachment to the enamel is 100% within enamel, you might be okay. Again, not ideal, food for thought. Um, yeah, many different ways to go about this. My gut tells me this patient has money. It's not about the money. It's about kind of making assessments on what we see in the patient's mouth to best guide them. This is a case that composite will be a lot of work with a high likelihood of giving you issues long-term. Um, I like zirconia here. So, in a nutshell, a year and a half of Invisalign to anterioralize those teeth, I would strongly consider some Propel here, microosseous perforations to soften the bone. In Bruxers, it's very helpful. Give her a V-Pro, and then create the overjet, and then crown the upper two teeth and then maybe veneer the others or a combination of crowns and veneers and then whatever leveling you get here great when you're done just like you did with Vinny flatten this uh, to give you nice protrusive guidance uh, distribution of forces during protrusion and then I would maybe consider some composite on these lower interiors uh, to make sure you have canine guidance she's suffering from premature contacts back here as you can see 
So anyways, thanks again for sharing. <clears throat> Hope this helps and let me know what you end up doing.